So just representative voices of uh, what was going on yesterday, but it is not the only problem. Um, what about Wendeto? What would be your comment in as far as this problem of unemployment that we continue to have? I mean, people are spending years looking for a job, any opportunity, and it's so much is <coughs> getting lost in, in skill and manpower. Yes, Sam, I agree with you. I think um, perhaps the biggest challenge that we face in this country is um, youth un unemployment. Mm -hmm. And um, it is so serious because every year we are producing these hundreds of thousands of graduates from our universities, from our tertiary institutions, from our TVETs. Uh, but as an economy, we've not been able to create jobs at the same pace at which we produce uh, uh, these graduates. Mm -hmm. And um, it is sad because in very, very many other countries, uh, you know, a lot of youths are actually recruited you know, from universities, so you hardly find any youth finishing university and then still looking for a job. Now, what we need to do, um, I think as a country, there are several steps that we can take. Some of them are ongoing. Uh, one, we have to focus on projects and programs <coughs> that basically create some mass employment for our youths. And I think some, this is one of the wisdom mm -hmm. of the affordable housing project, uh, where, as you are aware, the government are intends to uh, create up to a million jobs you know, just uh, uh, by way of uh, uh, you know, affordable housing uh, uh, program. We can extend this to other labor intensive uh, uh, projects. For example, all these uh, construction that is being mooted, whether it's construction of dams, whether it's construction of roads. Uh, as a growing economy, we have a huge opportunity to create especially jobs uh, you know, in the construction center, uh, in the construction sector. But um, uh, moving from that, we also need to see how we can support our small businesses. How can we support our small businesses to be able to create enough jobs uh, for our people? Today, um, if I got the, the figures right, I think SMEs uh, you know, employ something like 80% of, you know, of, of the population. And uh, how can we ensure, and, and by the way, Sam, the, the, the area where you can create jobs fastest is by empowering SMEs. You know, government jobs, you cannot create them as, as fast as possible. You know, public service jobs are formal jobs. Even jobs in the corporate, you may not be able to create them as fast as possible. But, but by, by just uh, empowering, uh, you know, an SME, an SME, uh, a small trader who possibly was uh, running a shop on their own, and that shop grows 20, 30%, they are able to employ one more person. And, um, you know, the rate at which you can create jobs in the SME sector is way, way faster. So what we need to do to support SMEs, and I, and I, and I agree, uh, you know, uh, to some extent with, uh, you know, with, with my brother here, Karanja, mm. that there are certain policy things that we need to do to ensure that, um, you know, our SMEs thrive. And one of the things uh, that SMEs require is a conducive business environment. And we've been talking about this for a long time. And I know there are a lot of steps being taken by the Kenya Kwanzaa government uh, to ensure that uh, we ease, uh, you know, the ease of doing business. Uh, but other than also the ease of doing business, we must also ensure that there is, that, that there is a, a, a good access to affordable credit by our SMEs. We do not want our SMEs to be crowded out by the banks. We want them to be able to, uh, you know, to access um, you know, affordable credit uh, so that they can be able to thrive. We also need to ensure that we have policies that protect local, you know, local, local enterprises. We are people trying to do manufacturing here. They are currently being outweighed by all these uh, you know, uh, imports coming from, from outside. Uh, and, we are not, and, and I know we are in a global economy where we have to uh, trade with other nations, but there are certain nascent industries that we can try to protect by way of government policy, tax policies, just to ensure that um, you know, we have more and more of, 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 of things being manufactured in this country. Because Sam, every time you buy an imported item, especially one that we can manufacture locally, remember we have given that job to China, we have given that job to Turkey, we have given that job to India or whoever. So how do we also have tax policies that, that discourage import of things that we can do? And I saw the president talking about furniture, which is a very, very good example. Why should we be importing beds when we can make them locally? You and me, we can easily be able to start a workshop to make beds and, and save, uh, and not just save foreign exchange, but also be able to create uh, you know, jobs locally. So these are some of the measures that, um, and, and there are many others that, you know, that the government can be able to do or are already ongoing, just basically to support our SMEs. There has been some interventions, some like um, the Hustler Fund, uh, which is also a small tool that enables that small SME, you know, just be able to, um, you know, be able to thrive. And if we can get 
a number of our youth from this mentality that they have to get formal employment, that they have to join the KDF, which, which, which because we cannot create as enough opportunities, you know, uh, for a million people, for a million youth who are out there to join, a, you know, KDF. Otherwise, we'll have the, perhaps the largest army in the world. Uh, what we need to do is to open their eyes into other opportunities, especially opportunities for self-employment. We also have very many opportunities coming up for things like online jobs. So again, these are areas that we need to channel the energies of our youth so that we have more and more youth you know, you know, finding something uh, you know, productive.